So welcome to Education and Disaster Risk Reduction. I'm, um, I'm here on behalf of Disaster Recovery Institute International. We've been uh, educating individuals in business continuity, disaster recovery, and risk management since 1988. Um, we educate uh, those both in the public sector and in the private sector, although uh, primarily in the private sector, large and medium-sized companies. Um, we train in over 50 countries and we have certified professionals, those individuals who have gone through our training programs and maintain our certification in over 100 countries. Um, so in addition to the 15,000 plus certified professionals we have globally, um, we also see it as part of our responsibility to educate the public and broader audiences about the importance of disaster management, uh, to use a very broad term that the private sector unfortunately doesn't use. Uh, we use business continuity because it sounds more uplifting and more promising. Uh, disaster management sounds like something you'd never want your, your uh, shareholders to hear about. So uh, we use different terms that are a little bit more optimistic. Um, but we try to reach out to the public through the forum of media, etc., to educate them about the important work that our professionals do uh, to safeguard their livelihoods, their professions, and their um, goods and services um, as part of their careers. We're a member of the Arise Initiative, uh, here, represented here today. That's the private sector advisory group uh, that works with UNISDR and advises and sets goals and targets for the private sector globally. Um, so we're, we're quite involved with them. We also work with ISO um, on the standards for this area, so societal, societal security, resilience, and business continuity. And then we advise governments. Um, typically, while we will also do custom training programs for both govern governments and international organizations, often the work that we are doing is representing to them the needs and the goals uh, and the challenges that are faced by the private sector more broadly and saying, okay, so this is our landscape, this is our set of challenges, these are our needs, so that we, in the time of crisis, will be as little reliant on government uh, resources as possible. Um, if the private sector can recover itself very quickly, that will help the overall community to recover more quickly and to be more resilient in the face of different kinds of shocks and stressors, whether those be natural disasters, cyber incidents, pandemics, anything else. If the private sector can recover and doesn't need a lot of support from the government, that frees up government resources to protect and help those vulnerable communities that actually need the help. 93% um, of Fortune 100 companies employ somebody certified by us. Um, so when we talk about the needs of the private sector, these are the people that we're talking to every day. Large financial institutions, manufacturing companies, consulting firms, um, all kinds of different organizations. And some of the work we do is um, bringing committees together uh, from all of these organizations to talk about uh, leadership in these different areas. And um, some of the work that they did is mapping out what they see as the trends and challenges um, for risk management and business continuity professionals over the coming year. And what we see here, um, I mapped it out with different colors that sort of match to the global risk report um, that the World Economic Forum puts out uh, for ease of use. And you see that while they are concerned about um, natural disasters, I mean, you can't see these, but. Uh, the green ones are natural disasters. There really isn't that much, which is sort of surprising. But that's usually because the private sector is feeling like they've got that pretty much under control, at least large companies. What they're concerned about are uh, technological failures, cyber attacks, cyber incidents that have similar effects on communities at a very large scale level. A broad powder, power outage that lasts two, three, four, five days has a very similar impact on a community um, to a, a flood or a hurricane or an earthquake. Uh, it causes widespread chaos, violence, massive disruption. And so the private sector is really concerned because they haven't quite figured out um, how to deal with that. Certainly not how to um, best partner with the government to prevent that kind of crisis from occurring. So how do we help? Um, we are trying to bring these two communities together who are talking about the same problems, the same issues, the same concerns, and don't talk to each other, are in total silos. The Sendai framework maps very closely to the professional practices for business continuity management, which is the standard that is used by private sector organizations. And the goals are essentially the same. So we're trying to figure out how we can, as a nonprofit that represents this community, bring these two communities together to talk to each other and coordinate more effectively. But when I talk to private sector audiences, they've not heard of the Sendai framework. They don't know what it is. 
They don't know what disaster risk reduction is. They talk about business continuity, cyber, risk management, all of these sorts of private sector terms that essentially mean the same thing. So we took the priorities of the Sendai framework and we mapped them out and said, okay, these are the different um, priorities that exist in all of these different subcategories for the Sendai framework. Um, then we took the professional practices. The professional practices are something that we maintain. Um, we are the, the conveners for writing them, but they're really written by the leading practitioners in the field at all of these different private sector organizations who come and provide input, and then we release the standard, which we maintain and edit every four years, and in turn, it's used by thousands of organizations globally. And what it is, it's a very practical 10-step, this is how you assess the different threats that exist for your organization. This is how you figure out what kind of an impact they will have. And this is how you plan for it. This is used by the US government. It's used by the Singapore government. It's used in Japan. It's used in China. It's used in Brazil, here in Mexico, um, as well as by large companies. So uh, it's a really practical how-to guide. And it sort of sets the standard for how people talk about this planning process. And so what we decided to do was map the professional practices to the Sendai framework to see if they can help support the implementation of the Sendai framework because companies are already doing this. So it's not that large of a leap to say, okay, you're already supporting the Sendai framework. Why don't you verbally support that with a real commitment and get involved in the community that is charged with implementing the Sendai framework. And you can see here, that this is, these are the professional practices, and these are the Sendai requirements that are covered by each of those professional practices. But there are a couple of um, key things that we noticed when we were doing uh, this mapping. One is that the top three areas where the DRI professional practices cover the widest range of Sendai requirements are in the detailed planning process, before anything occurs thinking about the risks that are going to occur, and then mitigating them. That's what Sendai is largely concerned with, and it's a really uh, pro-mitigation approach, whereas the professional practices are all saying, assume that that didn't work and something happened anyway. What are you going to do? And you see that the, the Sendai framework is a little bit thin on that side in terms of really figuring out, okay, well, we, didn't, um, we understood the disaster risk, but in the end, we were not able to prevent it, and something happened. There's no plan. There's no requirement for a plan in the Sendai framework. There is a little bit, but it's kind of vague. Um, so that's an area of potential weakness that could be addressed uh, in future and also through broader implementation. And then we see that um, the, the two core areas of the professional practices, risk assessment and business impact analysis, are pretty, pretty widely represented, although not as highly as you would think. So the idea of this mapping is to try to help those organizations that are using the Sendai framework to speak the same language and understand what the businesses are doing and vice versa. Um, so we will be publishing this framework uh, in the next, over the summer, um, with, some, with the actual mapping itself and then some uh, information about how to best incorporate this and how to use it and how to talk about it so that when you are talking to organizations uh, within your community that you understand um, who to contact at that organization and how they go about their planning process. And they're free, so that's great. Um, we have a resource library on our website that we maintain free of charge uh, for the good of the community. There you can get the professional practices for business continuity management. You can also use our glossary. Um, we re represented the private sector for the rewrite of the disaster management terminology for uh, UNISDR. Um, this document was used as part of that process. And there's lots of case studies um, from governments, from private organizations um, that are available to you completely free uh, in our presentation library. So I encourage you to go there, create an account, um, download these resources, which I think you'll find really helpful and useful in your own process. And then, of course, we also have our training tracks in these different areas, and then the certification. So if you're looking for who to talk to at an organization who is in charge of this sort of work at their organization, they're usually a, a CBCP, a Certified Business Continuity Professional. That's the most commonly held certification. We also encourage you to check out our uh, training programs and certification programs as well. Thank you very much.